What would you say to Poles to wake them up to this process that the communists are using to slowly, gradually take away our freedoms? What Hong Kong have been treated would, would be the same to Poland. Poland now is due uh, and multi-dimensional have been affected by the CCP, including tele telecommunication, 5G networks, schools, infrastructures, and etc. etc. have been gradually influenced by Chinese capital. Every money spent by China in Poland, they have their political hinder agenda. They would exert their political influence after they discover the money. Although they just pretend that it's just business is business, politics is politics. But I do hope that Poland could wake up because Poland has a full history, have been suppressed by the totalitarian regime. So they should be, I mean Poland should be even more cautious because your guys, your government had experienced why and how suffering of this guy regime will be. Good day, dear viewers. My name is Ivan Belostenko. This is Against the Tide TV. Our guest today is Simon Cheng, former UK embassy employee in Hong Kong, uh, who was arrested and accused of spying for foreign powers uh, and tortured by the CCP. Uh, today we'll talk about the situation in Hong Kong uh, and the aftermath following the national security law uh, enforced uh, forced upon Hong Kongers by the CCP. Hello, Simon. It's great to have you back with us again. Yes, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Um, I'm very pleasure to uh, to note um, you and be invited to have this kind of interview. Um, so tell us, what, what's your personal situation right now following the national security law and what happened with, uh, with Jimmy Lai? Are you safe uh, uh, at the moment or are you in danger? And, uh, you know, what, what is the danger that is, um, you know, posed to you? And uh, is there any warrant for your arrest at the moment? Uh, yes. Um, well, after national security law, I I, I am still keep uh, keep the protocol democracy movement alive, and I can um, keep keeping a lot uh, active. So I keep receiving the media interviews, and also I set up several organizations, including Haven System, which is the information sharing platform. Um, um, to share the asylum policies amongst different countries for rescuing my filament um, to, uh, to 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 uh, to not to be persecuted by the authorities back in our hometown in Hong Kong up to the secret police now cross the border to our hometown in Hong Kong. So um, I'm also possibly this kind of the idea and what I I I has been doing overseas been. Uh, peace Beijing off. So that's why now the Hong Kong police force, the new established um, um, national security department, um, attached to this kind of the Hong Kong police force, um, issued a rats warrant for me, and I've been put on the warrant list now. So they accuse me of um, um, instigate secessions of China. So so um, this kind of thing, of course, as usual, is based on the very groundless um, accusation. And and I, I don't think that it's true and fair to judge me saying I'm secessionist because I never ever say I work for independence of Hong Kong, of course. Um, but I do criticize the regime, the CCP regime, because it's inhumane. Um, to govern the people, so so that's why I'm on target, and that is a proof that after national security law, they would suppress the dissent. So now, in this situation, I'm a political fugitive now, and even before a few days of this car of the uh, a, a um a rat's warrant and the issue from the state media CCTV, I felt. I've been followed, and one of the very prominent activists in exile, Ray Wong, and in Germany he came to London to meet me. We already felt we have been followed, and even exactly the date um, um, when I just finished the protest outside the Chinese embassy in London, and when I finished the meal uh, with my friends around there, and. 
and I just realized that I got a message for it by my friends on the news saying I was put on the bond list. And afterwards, I already felt that even a team of suspicious people follow me. And, and, and that's the kind of things I feel I've been monitored and I've been told. And even some kind of like um, social media or something that would be tapped. And even a few days ago, actually, it's like um, a day um, um, uh, yesterday that I received a threat letter, a threatening letter, and the title saying that uh, the Chinese agent is coming to get me back. So, so this kind of the um, letters trying to threaten me. Um, so, so that's kind of the new situation. Um, so far, especially after national security law, and I felt that they're quite determined to uh, to execute this law. And even you can you can see that this cap the law would be on their jurisdiction, and to charge almost everyone, not just Hong Kong citizens. If you can see, one of the um, citizens on the warrant list is even the American citizens. And so, so these kind of things, I think, is not a matter only to Hong Kong people, but even all of us, and even you, audience, um, who listen um, to this kind of the uh, program. Uh, by the way, if you can't say anything, uh, if you can't say something because it's too risky, just just say rather not comment. Uh, we, we fully understand. Uh, I wanted to ask you as well <clears throat> because you've been uh, one of our guest speakers at our sixth annual uh, Patriotic uh, Club conference recently. Uh, links yes. will be available in the description below. Um, how did the life, or well, you described uh, how the your life changed, but how did the situation in Hong Kong change as a result of this law? Well, in Hong Kong, absolutely, that you can see um, this kind of the sweeping national security law, even the process is not legitimate because that's it certain a circumvent and even supersede the legislatures in Hong Kong, and that they omit and that they they don't they didn't listen to the voice of the local people, so that they use they they, they enforce and. To enact this kind of like the draconian law um, through the National People's Congress, but de facto is a rubber stamp. They never ever try to object and oppose any kind of the law and act proposed by the government. Never. So um, this kind of things when they implement this law in Hong Kong, and you can say there has no any means of uh, freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. And you can just simply wave the flag, or chant a slogan, or even write an online statement on social media, and then you could be detained, you could be arrested, you could be charged and accused of any reason that you know uh, mentioned of national security law. So that's why I would feel in Hong Kong that has no any freedom at all now. And even for media, it's becoming harder and harder to find anyone within Hong Kong to speak out. Um, it's because that they will be a little bit afraid. That's why I need to take calls because I re keep receiving the media in the field and I keep criticizing the CCP. That's why I always, I'm now on the wanted list. So, so I, w I would feel that the people would feel very paranoid and nervous and depressed because the most depressing things is that if the people they experience usually limit freedom, also limit but still freedom, and now that's they could telling the freedom bit by bit. You will feel the people are very unhappy with that, and then they will try their way if they get benefit from this kind of the economic system, they it be get richer um, sooner, and then they can leave this kind of the hometown sooner. But however. You can still stay, see, and many people they're very loyal to this kind of the hometown. They still wanted to stay, and because they think they're belonging to here, so that's why they would just uh, insist until the last minute. And you can see a few days ago that and over hundreds of policemen they raid the pro democracy media, Apple Daily, uh, office building, and it make me think of. 
like in Nazi Germany previously, the right any media who safeguard the freedom of press and to criticize the regime and it's so horrible and they raid for they search this car of the office building for eight hours and using over several hundreds of police force and they claim the police force claim that's because why they they sent so many policemen to do it is because that's they wanna to 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 keep to, to not to disturb the journalists to keep doing their works, but it's so they just simply lie about it shamelessly, because even several hundred policemen um, rate this car of the office, but still they spend eight hours, almost one day, one working work, one working day um, of it, and you can see that's a rats a management board team of the Apple Daily and one of the prominent um, tycoons of media. Jeremy Lai have been arrested. And also even one of the famous activists, Andreas Chow, and also uh, several of my friends that Wilson Lee have been arrested. So so you can see that they would oppose any means and as a legal weapon to attack on our political destinies and our allies, uh, allies and friends who love freedom and democracy. So they wanted to send this kind of the chilling effects to most of the mass public in Hong Kong, not trying to, to go on the street anymore, not trying to uh, to criticize the government anymore. If you cross the lie, which the lie would never know where is it, and then they would detain us for any reason. So <laughs> I couldn't find an excuse saying that um, there has two systems anymore, or Hong Kong politically has any difference with mainland China. So so that's kind of things now happening um, in Hong Kong. That's why why so meaningful for us, like the activists in exiles now, need to speak up for them. Mm -hmm. Because they now they have no freedom to speak anymore. Or if they speak, they need to be prepared that the next minute that the police would knock their door. Mm -hmm. So 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 that is way why we keep uh, speaking out because we can't say um, when we got the asylum overseas and then we were just like to be cooling down and try to back to normal. If so, I would just feel so sorry for my fellow men. So I just keep to take that course. Even now I've been, you know, I have been put on the warrant list and always have been harassed by some of the agents overseas from China. I want to ask you as well um, about the what, what drives you, uh, why you are still fighting for free Hong Kong. Is it not better to just lead a normal life somewhere, uh, you know, safe, have a career abroad and a family? And why do you take the risk? It's because that's my people also are suffering. It's because that's the, the things never end and, and haven't been end. So we wanted to um, still fighting for democracy. Is that because now we're free? And that's we have more duty to help my fellow men to push for pro democracy movement further, because they had no chance now. So that's my belief, and that's why I need to cut tie with my family, and still continues because that the CCP put me into that way, is because that's the people they feel they cannot tolerate any freedom could be suppressed and deprived. It. So I respect it. I've been touched, and. And and I've been I've been asked, and that's like a call uh, for me to still to fighting. Um, I also want to ask you about this method that the communists have uh, of slowly erosion into the liberties and freedoms. Uh, we call it, and I'm sure you know, the method of slowly cooking the frog. So you won't notice that it's uh, ended up in boiling water and cooked to death. Uh, we see the same process here in Poland as well, uh, but most people are not aware of it. What, what would you say to Poles uh, to, to wake them up to this process that the communists are using to, to slowly, gradually take away our freedoms? Yes, exactly. So now Hong Kong, what Hong Kong have been treated would, would be the same to Poland. Because what I heard, what I saw is that Poland now is due uh, and multi-dimensional have been affected by the CCP, including tele telecommunications, 5G networks, schools, 
or you know like infrastructures and etc etc have been gradually influenced by Chinese capital but we need to think twice because every money spent by China in Poland they has they have their political hinder agenda it means that they would exert their political influence after they discover the money although they just pretend that it's just business in business politics is politics but based on the ideology of CCP never all the things were about politics so that's why the Five Eyes Alliance and even in the UK after pandemic after national security law they squeaked Huawei out and they get getting more worried about any Chinese investment in the UK or around the world so I do hope that Poland could wake up because Poland has a full history have been suppressed by the totalitarian regime so they should be I mean Poland should be even more cautious because your guys your fellowmen had experienced why and how suffering of this guy regime will be uh, we have published a letter to our president, Polish president Andrzej Duda, uh, calling him to condemn the CCP and make a clear declaration of support for Hong Kongers. Uh, he hasn't done uh, anything uh, along those lines. He hasn't condemned the regime or haven't expressed, uh, uh, you know, a clear support of of the side of Hong Kong. How does it make you feel that you haven't received the support from our president? And what would you say to him? Well, I do hope that your honourable. Um, country's president could stand with Hong Kong people is stand with the human rights because we're all humankind we are the same and actually Poland will be facing a similar situation just like Hong Kong but at this moment you could be um, um, seduced by Chinese capitals and investment because you were focusing on the short-term benefits and interests to getting uh, to be richer and to boost your own country's economy for short term but but the uh, the hindering cause would be very massive and huge. Remember that this kind of COVID-19 and pandemic actually is the region from China and it caused the economy uh, around the world massively. And even in the UK, that is that's still facing recession, uh, the most uh, serious recession uh, for the past 300 years, uh, based on the, the estimation by the Bank of England so it would be the same for Poland, but I heard that's a still very serious um, um, situation now and it's actually harming the economy. So it's still need to remember that why we need to be worried about the Chinese investment because previously we always thought that's because we, we even can get some benefit from it. But now you can see that you all you need to pay back to China because of the virus. And and even more than that is that um, um, your people are um, very hard to fight for democracy and now fortunately and finally established the presidential democracy at the end of the day and you can't just let turn it back to the communist rule and it just can't be affected by the new expanding totalitarian regime it could be very dangerous so I could I do hope that the president could wake up and that the people can give much more pressures um, to wake up and to change this kind of the government, to change their policy. <clears throat> I have a personal question, Simon. Uh, what gave you strength when you were tortured by the communists, by the CCP regime, uh, after you've been arrested, uh, to not give up? Uh, is there a spiritual uh, source that was giving you the strength and, and, and the courage to keep fighting? Yes, yes, I think that's uh, the faith is very important force for me um, especially when that time during the detention they put me into the personal cell that is solitary confinement I can't and I was not allowed to communicate with everyone including inmates so gradually you will, that's kind of the isolation would drive you mad so you need to always talk with myself so at that time I'm a Christian so faith is important. That's I keep praying. I keep talking with the God and saying that please give me power and make me to feel conscience and and to bring me back the mentality that I keep fighting to maintain rational and to think about next day or next next day 
how could I deal with this kind of the tortures and interrogations? So it's quite painful, but only faith and that strong faith for you, for us, that even if we face this predicament and difficulties, we can get it through. So Christianity and even the faith is so important. So if we can get this kind of the spirit, even we need to be ideal. It's not just what leads take to saying that now China, now that the CCP is getting more and more powerful, so so we need to be kowtowing to them. No, remember, Christian thousands of years ago, they also persecuted by Rome. That's the because they have a faith, and now we can see Christianity is the major force to influence the values and even culture of the human kind as well. So that's why I always encourage that Poland need to stand up to the principle and the value they believe, and that is called the value also matching with the Christianity. And just on the topic of Christians, there I wanted to ask you: How did the Christians in Hong Kong behave uh, during this this whole long-term, uh, you know, protests? Uh, are they avoiding politics and sort of hiding in their churches, what a lot of pe- Christians do, or, or do they um, and don't want to choose sides, or do they? Uh, support the movement, support the, the freedom movement and, and voice in their voices loudly, also in the political arena. Yes, um, actually um, from the traditional politics of Hong Kong, based on the colonial system, that they would have, uh, um, they would have several privilege for the uh, public recognizable or well established churches like in the UK, like you know Church of England, etc. And that they can have uh, automatically have a seat in 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 House of Laws, etc. And it would be similar in Hong Kong that some, you know, like very well established bits of, or priest that they can have a vote um, to vote for um, um, the chief executive, etc. So they have some kind of the privilege. So most of the people would thought that Christian would be more conservative. Because that they can be protected by this kind of undemocratic uh, uh, system. However, we we are quite surprised, and people will feel very grateful for most of the Christian, is that because they quite support the protest, and they even wanted to change this kind of system. Even this kind of system actually grants a bit more privilege for them. Um, it's because that's the the Christian they have more more duty to fight for the social injustice and then they see police brutality and then they see this kind of the undemocratic system violate and abuse the human rights so they, they stand up and you can see previously last year um, in the anti extradition bill protest that you can see lots of people they chant the slogan about Christianity and also that they even um, sing the Christian and religious song so, so that's kind of things because it's so important because the people that are getting depressed, especially those frontliners on the on site, they're getting uh, they're getting they're getting depressed, and they feel very no- nervous and paranoid. They need to be a bit more relaxed. They need to get support mentally. So that's why the Christian that they just went on the street and give the mental support and even gave the faith to those protesters to keep going on. Oh, that is so important, and more importantly, you can see that lots and lots and lots of the churches they provide a sanctuary to the protesters. If the protesters they're chasing by the police, and then the church will open the door and let the protesters come to to have a sanctuary to hide for a while. And that kind of thing is so thankful for the people in Hong Kong, so thankful for the churches, because that's the the saving. The next generation of Hong Kong, and you know, like churches in Hong Kong, they're very rich, they're wealthy, and sometimes they would be conservative. But at this kind of critical moment, they stand with the Hong Kong people. So we are very grateful. Is because they never ever mind that they could be, they could be in the vast interest groups, they could be the elites and standing with the government. But no, they stand up. To that principle and standing with the people. Simon, thank you so much for speaking with us today, despite the obvious uh, risks involved. And we will be praying for strength for uh, um, you and other brave people of Hong Kong in their fight against the murderous CCP regime. 
Uh, and we're also waiting for the day when uh, not just Hong Kong, but also mainland China will become free of the CCP. Yes, definitely. We still keep that faith and we can work and fight together for it. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Simon, for being with us. Uh, this was Simon Cheng, uh, the founder of Haven Assistance and pro-democratic uh, movement uh, activist. Thank you for being with us today. My name was Ivan Belostenko for Against Die TV. Thank you and God bless.